as you've teed up the experience of consumers and health plans is varied across the country. And we're excited to bring you all a panel of health plan speakers who have really been leaders and partners in helping consumers navigate coverage options under this new and changing regulatory environment. And we're going to hear their insights and innovations today. First, we'll hear from Calvin Anderson, Senior Vice President of Corporate Affairs and Chief of Staff for Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee. Calvin? Thank you, Catherine, and uh, thank you everyone for joining in, and uh, Erica and Lauren who went ahead of me. Uh, I want to focus on uh, a couple of points. Uh, one, that the cumulative impact from uh, marketplace uncertainty, of, you know, taking their toll on uh, us as an individual plan, but we think on insur insurers broadly. Uh, there are some stabilization measures that uh, we think are required to help dissuade any further erosion in the uh, ACA participation. Uh, and that uh, we also need to focus on uh, some of the key cost drivers uh, that are very much a factor uh, within the uh, marketplace. So our experience in, in Tennessee, Blue Cross was fully committed from the start uh, and was the only uh, insurer uh, to offer plans statewide in the first three years of uh, the ACA marketplace uh, in all 95 counties of Tennessee. Uh, our three-year losses on ACA plans are approaching uh, just south of uh, 500 million. So that becomes a real financial impact and real dollars. As we assessed it, uh, we naturally uh, understood that there were fewer young, healthy members uh, that enrolled in the plan than what we had expected, and that the risk pool never really uh, uh, grew large enough. Uh, the members uh, who did enroll had uh, far greater health needs uh, than uh, what we had anticipated, and that the medical utilization continued to increase and led to significant losses each year, even as we went through painful uh, rate adjustments to try to close the gap between what we charge and what we pay for care. So the continued losses and what we uh, saw a lot of, the uncertainties about the law, led to difficult but necessary uh, decision to scale back on what will be our 2017 ACA participation footprint, going from eight regions uh, in the state uh, to five. Uh, it's important that we note, however, that we will still be the only carrier in 57 of the 95 uh, counties uh, in, in Tennessee. Uh, as we uh, look a little deeper and we talk about our experience uh, in Tennessee, uh, our 2015 highlights as we look at uh, average uh, individual uh, claims costs compared to members that are covered through employer plans. We found on the medical end it was 43% higher for those on the individual marketplace uh, and uh, on pharmacy uh, whopping 58% uh, higher than those who are covered uh, with employer coverage. Looking further as we look at those uh, same individual marketplace uh, individuals on utilization, again compared to employer, uh, those who get their coverage from employer, uh, emergency room uh, utilization was 14% uh, higher, uh, inpatient hospital 42% higher, and behavior health uh, being 67% uh, higher uh, than those who uh, receive their coverage uh, through work. And so the uh, individual marketplace claims versus premiums, we uh, uh, did analysis that says 5% of our individual marketplace members paid 9% of the group's total premiums, yet accounted for 73% of the uh, total claims cost. So again, that paints that uh, 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 very uh, clear cumulative impact uh, that that's producing on us for our three-year uh, experience in the market. Now, we, we also think that there are some things that can be done that will help stabilize uh, the marketplace and try to fulfill and improve some of the uh, risk performance. So we, we think that the ACA risk mitigation programs were designed to help insurers adjust to what was a new and uncertain marketplace. 
uh, that uh, Tennessee is one of the bottom 10 states for consumer uptake on ACA plans. Typically, you'd want about 70% participation. Tennessee only had about 30% of eligible uh, consumers uh, sign up. And insurers typically price conservatively when entering a new market, trusting in the backstop that the uh, three R's were, are expected to provide for a large risk pool, and many insurers offered prices in the beginning of the ACA marketplace that was predicated on the fact that the uh, three R's would uh, be in place and work as designed. So some of the solutions that we uh, you know, think about is that the risk corridors, which was modeled after the successful Medicare Part D program, uh, uh, really need to be uh, stabilized for this uh, new and uncertain market, and that the risk adjustments need to stay consistent, and that the uh, reinsurance program is fully funded by private sector contributions, and health plans lowered their 2016 rates based on these rules and should receive the payments on those higher claims. And, as a consequence, we should oppose any efforts to eliminate or limit the ACA uh, reinsurance uh, program. Likewise, we think a more balanced risk pool is necessary for long-term stability and affordability. Uh, rather than simply focusing on the increased enrollment, we do have to focus on promoting continuous coverage. Uh, in that regard, uh, we would be focused on trying to require some upfront verification for special enrollment periods. Uh, you know, we fully recognize that while some people uh, uh, have uh, special enrollment periods needs, it's important that the government should be validating that eligibility at the time of enrollment, uh, just like it does in Medicare Advantage and the Federal Employees Health Benefit Programs and just as we do uh, in the private sector should also be a, a look to limit the uh, premium payment grace period and align it more with where state standards are, which in Tennessee is uh, 31 days. And then third party uh, premium payments by organizations with vested financial interests should be something uh, that should be addressed because that's very important in stabilizing the marketplace and in helping to ensure that there isn't uh, further enrollment. Uh, or, or further uh, erosion within the, uh, the uh, marketplace. And then finally, in, in stabilizing uh, the ACA, we think that there need to be uh, some addressing of the medical and pharmacy costs. That uh, remember, we have a medical loss ratio provision where health insurers must spend 80% of premiums on medical costs or issue refunds. Uh, no other uh, health industry segment have administrative costs and profits determined by law. So uh, direct medical costs are uh, a real uh, impact on premium drivers. Case in point, uh, you can look at prescription uh, drug costs, where the ACA plan's pharmacy costs have been 20 to 33 percent higher than employer-sponsored uh, costs and group plans. So uh, increasing drug cost transparency, limiting some direct consumer advertising, uh, and giving health plans greater flexibility to manage uh, cost-effective formularies are uh, areas where uh, we also see stabilization uh, can be affected by uh, uh, these actions on the ACA. And so uh, again, we. I firmly believe that the cumulative impact on the marketplace uncertainties have taken their toll on insurers and, uh, and uh, uh, must uh, mitigate the risk to protect the financial security of all uh, that all members rely on. Uh, that stabilization measures are required to dissuade further erosion in the ACA participation and that there really is a need to focus on the cost drivers that add to the uh, marketplace challenges uh, that affect uh, both insurers and consumers uh, alike.